if means that the computation is going to depend on the sequence. And if means that the execution time is going to depend on the secret. And this means that we're going to be able to do the timing attack. So really, really cool. Which brings me to the next slide. Temporal cycle attack analysis. So we shy, uh, it's going to be a large amount of subtractions. There are going to be as many subtractions that you had modular reduction zero. What, 2,000 subtractions? Cheap. This is a very, very fast operation. Very, very cool. So I want to do a uh, side channel attack on RC. And I'm going to do it using Montgomery reduction. Very, very cool. And this was one of the uh, one of the ideas of culture uh, in his 1995 paper, which got him to the front page of the New York Times. And to the front page of the Cypherpunks mailing list also. So Let's uh, let's get our get our, our, our bearings here. So um, Montgomery sometimes has an extra subtraction step, and the subtraction takes time. It takes a very small amount of time, but it takes time, which means that if there are operations which have extra reductions extra subtractions, they're going to take a very, very tiny, small amount of time to run longer than if you don't have this extra reduction. It's a small amount. Subtraction is a very, 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 very efficient operation, but still it takes time. Yeah, we know N. N is public. N is public. No problem. Everything is public except the secret key. You're using Kirchhoff's principle. Everything is public. The only thing which is not known is the secret sign. So I'm going to show you. Uh, um, I'm going to show you a practical uh, timing attack on um, RSA using Montgomery reduction, and I'm going to be basing it on the paper uh, from '98, "Timing Attacks Made Practical," uh, which is also on the Moodle. Very, very nice. Paper. So. Uh, let's at least uh, start with the uh, problem definition. So we have a device under test, um, and we're going to attack this device under test. This device under test is what is called uh, a stored value card. Stored value card is a bank card, and uh, it, you you know if you look at uh, something in comparable today, it could be a Bitcoin wallet. Uh, how does it uh, stored value card work? It has inside it a counter which is how, many mas how much money is inside the card. And you can give it commands like uh, take out one cent, put in $2, and so on. And I'm going to the stored value card, and I'm saying, uh, please, uh, uh, I want to pay uh, the bus $1. And then it's going to return a signed, it's going to check that they have a balance of $1. It's going to reduce $1 from the stored value. It's going to return a signed message which says, uh, I paid, uh, I, I, approve, I approve paying $1 because I checked and I have, I have more than $1 in my balance. So I can send, you know, pay one, pay two, pay three. E eventually I will run out of money in the stored value card. And then when I uh, give the smart card a request to please authorize to pay $1 million to somebody, the smart card will say, I'm not signing. Okay, okay, fine. The smart card is going to say, I refuse to sign this message because there is not so much money inside the stored value card. I can't authorize a withdrawal of $1 million. You only have $2. So, uh, motivated by this, what is going to be my objective as an attacker? Yeah, I want to get the money. I want to, I want to have, I want to create uh, a transaction uh, which says, uh, I, the smart card approved to pay uh, Yossi $1 million because I checked and I have, I have $1 million stored inside. And of course, this is a forging money. Yeah. Uh, so my, I want to get, I want to get an approved transaction for money I don't need. And there are various ways of doing it. Again, we have to think as attackers, uh, but how I'm going to do it today in this, in this meeting, I am going to get the secret key out of the smart card, 
and then I can just sign whatever I want without any interaction with the smart contract. Of course, there are other ways. This is what I'm going to do today. So um, just to summarize, uh, I have a private signing key, and I am going to send various messages to the smart card. So I can send all sorts of messages which are valid, you know, low balance transactions, stuff like that. And the smart card is going to verify them and then sign them and give me a sign signature over my transaction, which I'm requesting. And I can uh, measure the time difference between the message and the signature. This can give me an insight on how long No, we, use it, we don't use it S minus two times. We use it as many modular exponentiations we do in the uh, regular left to right algorithm. So it's between size of S and twice the size of S. Somewhere between the size of S and twice the size of S. As many, not, as many ones there are inside S. S plus the Hamming width, just like the regular one. You do the same amount of multiplications, but they are cheaper. Okay? This is the concept of one -home. Fine. So I'm going to give a message. The smart card is going to sign the message, and I'm going to uh, measure the time it took. So I want to, to stop on a very, very small, uh, uh, a uh, very small aspect here, which is quite interesting and important. And this is uh, the control that the attacker has on the value of the message M. Now, uh, you are uh, working at home right now on getting the password out of the assignment one server. And how does that work? You send one query, you look at the result, you think a little, then you send another query, you look at the result, and so on, right? Uh, and this is one model. Another model, uh, there is a model called uh, unknown plaintiff, which means I can just, every time I, I push the button, the device does a calculation, gives me out the result. I don't even know what the input was. This is, for example, if I'm attacking uh, an alarm system or, or something like that, I get, I just get the ciphertext without knowing the plaintext. A little more advanced than that is known plaintext. Known plaintext means uh, I can see the plaintext coming in, I can see the ciphertext coming out, but they have no control over the value of the plaintext. Above that is chosen plaintext, which means I can send like a, a big Excel file full of values to the device and it will go over them one by one. And the most permissive one is adaptive chosen plaintext, which means I can look at the result and think about the next input. This is adaptive. Now, just to make sure uh, you understand, um, which attack model are we using in the homework assignment? Okay, so, so you are using actually, you're using the adaptive chosen plaintext for the homework assignment. You are sending a query to define the length, and then you're sending a set of queries to determine the first character and then the second character. If you were just going, if you had to commit to your queries ahead of time, it will be very difficult for you to do the attack you're probably implementing right now. So you're very, very, very reliant on adaptiveness. Uh, the attack uh, in this uh, work is actually just built on known plaintext. You can soon send all sorts of random data as long as you know what's coming in and know what's coming out you can do 